Welcome, my name is Myron and I'm going to be taking you through uh, setting up Material UI onto a React project. This is going to be a multi-phase and this first part is just setting it up and using some components in this application. Now I've already got a pre-built application, it's got a node server and it's got a React client side to it. And if we look over here, I've got three terminals running. One is for all of my commits that I'm going to be doing. Uh, another one is running my server. And then you can see the final one is running my node client side for the React. Now, my React build is using Create React app, so it's going to have some live reload refreshing here. But let's take a look at what the application is here out of the box. Now, I myself am a front-end developer, or mostly concentrate on front-end. Uh, I do full stack, but I absolutely concentrate on front-end. Uh, it's kind of my, my happy space. So I have some styling in place here, as you can see on my application. But what we want to do is we want to jazz this up because as you can see as we go a little bit deeper I don't have other things styled out as much as would make me happy and there's some things here that I'm not really enjoying like uh, the descriptions are a little bit different sizes here and it causes things to look a little off right so we're, these are things that we're going to try and solve using Material UI. Now everything that's in place right now is just standard CSS. There's no other magic happening, no other libraries happening. If we hit uh, details, we come to a details that has a photo and has some of the information that was available on the list page, uh, but then it's got some additional information about said creature. And if we want to edit the information, we can click on the edit button and it'll take us over to the edit page where we can edit name, uh, we could edit type, we could edit the photo here, uh, if we had a new photo that we wanted in there, uh, and we could even come in here and edit the attributes as well. Now obviously, uh, this is not uh, what I would consider the best UI experience here. Uh, but uh, it would work for what it's doing right now, right? Like, it's all functional. If I uh, actually change this from Ancient Bronze Dragon to just Bronze Dragon, and I come down to the bottom and I hit Save, you'll notice we come back to this page, and it's just Bronze Dragon. So we can change it back. Save, and again, we're back to Ancient Bronze Dragon. Right, and we can even go back to the list, or if we're down and we hit edit on here and we're deciding, oh, well, we don't really want to edit, we'll just go back to details, right? Now we're back to details. So that's it, there's not a lot going on there, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes. We've got Redux and Redux Sagas handling our global state and our API interactions. And then we've got a full-fledged API on the back end. Like I said, though, what we're going to be concentrating on is placing Material UI into this site and making it uh, much more robust visually and even interaction-wise. Because uh, there's some things, like if I'm over here on the edit, uh, I would love these things to, to look a lot nicer. Um, we ha also have potentially error messaging uh, that would come across. So uh, if we have stuff that's not correct. We want error messaging to show up appropriately. So in order to handle all of these things, we're going to bring in Material UI. So like I said, we're going to start with just the initial setup. Initial setup is pretty straightforward right off the bat. Uh, but let me just walk you through from the beginning. We're going to be bringing in a uh, dependency from the NPM site that is at material-ui. And you're going to notice as you type this in, 
you're going to get this showing right up at the top, WAC Core. This is the base of what we're going to be bringing in. Now, if you're wondering, like, how did I know this? Uh, I know this because if you go to the Material UI site, uh, it will actually tell you if you go to the Get Started. So if you come over here to Get Started, it shows you what we're going to be doing. So we're going to use an npm install command to do the import of at material dash UI whack core. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, as we move along, we get a little bit further into this and we're getting a little bit more advanced with our UI, you're going to notice that we bring in other dependencies. They have their core separated out from things like icons. So we would bring in a different dependency to help us with icons on our website. And we're totally going to get there on our application to have actual icons on there. So we're looking pretty good. It's done installing here. So now we need to use it. Now, using it looks pretty straightforward. I'm going to come over here to the application so we can see it used, and we're going to go all the way back to the beginning here, so we're right on the list. Now, the thing that I want to do is I want to replace these buttons with the Material UI button, so we have a nice consistent button in place. So once we have the dependency there, we can absolutely come in, and I'm going to jump right into the component, and this component is actually the creature list item. So that's the thing that's getting repeated through and has our C details button. Now, if you were wondering like, okay, well, how do I put in a button? You could potentially figure that out by coming over here to the material website again. And if we're at the beginning of the site, and if you've come to it for the first time, you're gonna see a little hamburger menu icon. That's what this says, hamburger menu icon. Click on that, and you're going to see this components link. When you click on there, you see all of the components that are available to you from Material UI. Specifically, we want this button component. So we're going to click on that, and it gives you a bunch of demos. Now, if we want to find out, like, how, okay, how do we get this on our page, we can see there is an import statement right here. All right, so that's how we get it on the page. Now, there's two ways to import this. I'm going to show you both. Uh, and we're just going to start with the one that they show us here. So I'm going to copy that, jump over to my code base, and at the top of my document, I'm going to create a new section for my material UI. So this import section is going to be all of the imports that we're going to bring in for material UI. Now that we've brought in button, I can use that just like I would use any other React component. So what I'm planning on doing is replacing this button with the material UI button. So what we do is we can add in the material UI button. And I'm going to put the C details text inside of here. And I'm just going to save real quick, just so we can see the change. And if I come over here to the page, we can see there's another see details button, right? Now, this doesn't look exactly like the one that we're seeing on the Material UI site, like these. The reason for that is if we look at them, there's a couple of attributes here. We have this variant attribute and this color attribute. This is how they're passing props down to their component in order to give it the styling treatment that you want on the component. In particular, this variant is what we're looking for. So we're going to copy this variant contained and put that onto our components. Save that. And then, again, just look at the page. All right, now it looks like we have a full wrapped button, right? So that's pretty good, but uh, I don't really want the gray color. So let's go ahead and see what color options we might have. So we can see there is a color attribute, and it's got primary, secondary, but I only see primary and secondary here, and then this one goes back to primary. Well, do I have more options than that? 
if we wanted to know all of the options that we had available to us for any one of these attributes or props getting passed down to the component, we would scroll all the way to the bottom of the documentation. And as you can see, as we're scrolling, there's lots of different options, right? So if you saw something here that you really liked, you could totally replicate that by clicking on this show source code and then you can see how they accomplished that. Now, as we were saying, let's go all the way to the bottom, you see this API section. In this API section, we can click on the button component that we're using, and what it's going to give us is API documentation. So this documentation is not the same as our previous that was showing us a demo and then code examples what this is doing for us is it's giving us a list of things that are appropriate for this component so this is the list of props and then if we keep scrolling down we can see that there's a CSS list now as I get a little bit further and we're getting a little bit more complex with how our overall UI is going to look we'll start talking a little bit more about this CSS section but for right now we're not going to talk about the CSS section we want to concentrate on is the prop section. Now in this prop section we can see some of the things that we were looking at. We were looking at color, we were looking at variant, and then it tells us all of the acceptable values. It tells us what kind of value to pass and what the default is because this column is our default so it'll default to text but we can change it to contained or outline. And then it gives us like a little description over here. So if we look at color, we have default, inherit, primary, and secondary. So not a huge amount of options, so we'll probably go with the primary. So we'll say color equals primary. Hit save, and when the page refreshes, I can totally see my primary button. Now there's all kinds of other options there, but for right now I just want to kind of get it in the page and try it out. Right? So that's all we're trying to do. But I want to replace it and still have it be actionable. So I'm going to try and transition this on click. Now we can always just move the attribute and see if it works, or we can take a look at the documentation beforehand and see if it has anything saying about how an on-click works. Now we don't see anything here in the props about on-clicks, so we're going to assume that an on-click is going to work for the button. Now we can also go back to the demos, which if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the API page, we can see a link back to the buttons demo. So if we go back to the buttons demo, we can see here and we, we don't see any references here that actually are saying what, that it's using an on-click. Now this is disabled, right? Still no on-click. So we could look through these and see if we've got one that's actually going to show us an on-click. Right? Even this button doesn't have an on-click. So, you know, uh, we're going to assume that we have an on-click, and hopefully we do. So I've transitioned this on-click attribute up here. I'm going to hit save, and then hopefully with the refresh, I'll be able to get over the details. All right, so that totally worked for us. Now the big thing is going to be I want to make sure that I go through and update any other buttons that I might have so that they're going to be consistent with this. Now this is going to take me just a little bit, but bear with me and we'll, we'll get right back to a couple other components.
All right, so we've got all of our buttons now replaced with the material UI button. So if we go all the way through, we've got a nice consistent set of buttons that we're using. Now, is this the final color that we want? Probably not. Are there some things that we want to change about this? Absolutely. But for right now, we just want to make sure that we're consistently using the material UI components across our entire application. So we've got a few more things to replace out here. But a couple of things I want to just go over here because you'll notice that I was removing the custom class that I had in place. So I had a custom class of BTN. Now I was removing this because one, I didn't want it to conflict with any of the styles that I have here. But you'll notice that none of that is coming across. This is because Material UI's built-in styling is going to take precedence. So a lot of times I can't override with CSS that I'm importing in and using classes on. We have actually very specific ways that we need to override any existing styles with Material UI. We'll be getting into that a little bit later, but for right now, I just want you to make you aware of that. The other thing that we want to take a look at is up here. I said there was two ways to import things via Material UI. This is the first one, so if we wanted another different component in here, let's see, maybe we want... Hmm... Yeah, we could put something like paper in place. So paper adds this little drop shadow area here. So I could potentially add paper to here to make a difference. Now, if I wanted to add the other component, I would have to do the same sort of thing. I'd create an import with the name of the component from, and then you'd use at material UI. Now, it's auto sensing for me here in VS Code, so I can just hit return and it'll fill in the whole dependency for me. But I need to go one step further. I need to go whack and then the name of that component. So I've now got, oh, I have too many P's in there. So I've now got paper imported, and I could totally use paper. Now we have something happening here with our CSS. It's kind of handling this sort of stuff for us, but we're going to want to replace this at some point. So I could potentially come in here and replace this with paper. And this class isn't really going to take effect now. But now I have paper in place, right? Now, every component is going to need to be imported like this. There's the second way of importing components, which is actually going to give us a little bit simpler of a syntax, at least in my opinion, a little bit simpler of a syntax. So if we're importing multiple components, one way we can do it is by deconstruction. So instead of targeting the component itself, we target Material UI Core and then we tell it the component we want to pull off. In this case, button and paper. Then we don't need the two individual imports. Now for organizational and code styling, I usually break it up into multiple lines, like so. Depending on whether you're using something like Prettier or whatever code styling standard you're following, you might approach this a little bit differently than me. But this is the code styling standard that I'm going to follow. So we've got the two things imported and it'll work just the same as our other two imports worked. So this is kind of a personal preference. Uh, you're not really going to get any efficiencies here other than I have less things I've typed in. So that's really the only efficiency that we're actually going to gain there. 
Otherwise, if we come back over to our application, those things still work. Now, we've brought in paper and paper surrounding here, and it kind of looks almost exactly like what we had before, right? So not too bad, but we're going to have to switch this up a little bit as we continue and see where else we can go with the rest of it. I'm going to leave you with that for right now. Uh, take a quick pause. Uh, if you want to go around and try out some of the material UI components, I highly recommend just going through here, seeing what some of them do. Card is always a nice one. Uh, it's got a lot of different features to it. Uh, there's lots of different options here. And I'll go over some of the different components here as we go in and put stuff in. But as far as setting up, this is pretty much all we need. We just needed to import material and then we need to start using the components. The key to using the components, of course, is seeing which kind of attributes get added to the components at various times. So with that, I'll see you next time for a little bit deeper of a look at how we start styling some of these components.